Hello everybody, I am Fuzzy Face and we're back today with Motorsport Manager but something a little bit different today. We're back with a different mod. If you've watched my McLaren Motorsport Manager series you will have heard me talk about starting a new series. Today that new series is here. It is the 1998 season. This mod is available on the Steam Workshop. It's called the 1998 Mini Mod. I think it's made by the same people that do the Ice Mod which is a real life mod as well. But it's a really good mod. All the car models look absolutely brilliant here. They've all they've all been designed individually in that they all match the 1998 cars. As you can see, the number one car in this game is the West McLaren Mercedes, obviously powered by the Mercedes engine. They do have Mika Hakkinen and David Coulthard. They are the favourites. They did win the 1998 series by quite a lot. Mika Hakkinen just beat Michael Schumacher to the title, didn't he? Because if I recall correctly, correctly Schumacher did he stalled on the last race in Japan I think it was out of it already by that point but yeah McLaren Mercedes obviously the favorites here our Ferrari the F300 it should be a little bit better than the Mercedes car the McLaren Mercedes in the corner it's a little bit more aero focused the Mercedes or well, the McLaren Mercedes as usual like the Mercedes of today obviously not like the McLaren of today really strong a really quick Mercedes engine our Ferrari, obviously we've got Michael Schumacher and Eddie Irvine in there. So we'll be hoping for a really good season. And it's going to be a little bit confusing because the team that's in the Scuderia Rossini slot is the Sauber. They do have a Ferrari engine as well. Rebadged as the Patronus SPE-01D. A little underpowered this season. They were in 1997. 1998 actually, isn't it? Because uh, they have John Lacey in the car who's just joined from Benetton. So... Yeah, he finished fourth. I think he finished fourth the season before. So hopefully he's going to be having a good season in the Sauber. They also have Johnny Herbert, who's been with them for quite a while. In the Panther slot, we have the Williams team. 1998, they moved to red away from their blue, white and gold livery, the famous livery of the 1990s. Recolored for the fact that instead of Rothman's uh, British, Ameri British American Tobacco Company, I think, yeah, I think that's what they're called, they went, or they wanted the Winfield brand promoting, so everything changed to red. They do have the reigning champion, Jax Villeneuve, in the car. They are the reigning Constructors champion. But, but, 1998 saw a lot of upheaval from Williams. At the end of 1997, Adrian Newey left, which left them designing this FW20 car for 1998, totally without him. Renault, um, I can't remember what happened with Renault, I think... They had a buyout or something and they went, I'm not quite sure what happened with Renault, but they dropped out of supplying engines for Formula 1. It left Williams in a bit of a mess. They went with Mechachrome. Mechachrome, obviously, they bought the 1997 engines from Renault, rebadged them as Mechachrome. So they are a year behind engine-wise and we're possibly going to see that with the car. They should still have like the third best car overall. They also... Do have who was the other driver in the car? It's totally gone out of my head. Heinz Harold Frentzen, that's it. Should have Heinz Harold Frentzen in there. I haven't actually gone into this mod to check too much. Although I did do I did do a practice with them just to see how the graphics work, but I can't quite remember. I didn't click around the other teams too much. Then Kitano, obviously we've got Benetton. They struggled as well in 1998. Obviously, the same reason Williams did in that Renault left the spot. Uh Benetton were a Renault customer. Renault left. They also went with the Mechachrome engine, but it was rebranded with the Play Life. A rebadged, uh, rebadged as Play Life. So they're, uh, I'm guessing they're going to struggle here, but the car's rated quite good. The drivers are rated quite decent as well. They do have Giancarlo Fisichella in there and Alexander Vert. So we'll see how they can do this season. Then obviously we have the yellow Jordan car. Damon Hill's first season at Jordan 1998 he's just left the Arrows team Arrows really underperforming in 1997 and obviously Hill in 1996 won the driver's title with Williams also in the who else is in the Jordan car it's, I think it should be it should be Ralph Schumacher in there yeah so Ralph Schumacher should be in there and We'll just see how the Honda engine can do. It should be rated pretty decently, the Honda engine of 1998. And then we come to the first of the Ford branded cars, the Stuart Ford. Um, they should be running the VJ 
yeah it should be the VJ version of the engine so they should have a better rated engine than the Ford Minardi and the Tyrell Ford as well so there's three Ford supplied teams yeah so I'm guessing Stewart's engine should be rated better than Minardi and Tyrell and Tyrell's because it is an upgraded version the Tyrell and Minardi they run the JD version engine which is a 1996 engine so it's a little bit further behind and then we have the black arrows arrows in 1998 went with what's his name oh he's totally gone the Brian Hart engine company that's it they went with the Brian Hart engine company they built their own in-house engine but it wasn't that good it had a I'm sure it had a lot of reliability problems I think but we'll see how the car is not rated too bad. But anyway, that's enough of getting into the teams at the moment. We've got our beautiful prancing horse here, the red Ferrari, the Marlboro branded Ferrari, with shell on the side. Beautiful car. It's a lot thinner, a lot thinner at the front. And as we can see, it's a lot more aerodynamically pleasing than the McLaren Mercedes. But the McLaren is going to be really overpowered here. So let's jump in. It's going to say Windsor Racing. We can forgive that just as we can forgive that the drivers don't have the proper team colors in as yet and there we go we do have the second best rated car we do have the second best rated drivers i'm guessing that's because eddie irvine's three stars michael schumacher is possibly the best rated driver in the game we can't actually see anyone else we'll go ahead and scout everyone we'll scout everyone in in the game it should only just be formula one here so we'll scout everyone and then we'll be able to see what sort of ratings they've got we do have one team missing from this game which is the Prost team the Perge Prost Persia missing from this game although we do, we do seem to have their drivers don't we Jano Trulli is it Ty uh, Tyrell Tyrell he's the reserve driver there and where's John Alacy then where's John Alacy he's at Sauber no no not John Alacy who was the other See if we can see there. Oh, with Olivia Panis. He's a reserve driver. He's a reserve driver there. Yeah, Olivia Panis is a reserve driver at Minardi. So, I'm guessing he's a little bit better driver than Nakano and Trero. But he's reserved there, so new beginnings welcome. Welcome to Design Facility. We'll set ourselves second, just so we don't get fired. If we're not winning the championship, we don't want to end up being fired. We're waiting for a lot of sponsors coming through, although we can get this one, 300,000 per race. Although it's not engine, uh, not engines, sponsorship money is not going to be that big a deal. We're only going to be doing a few upgrades throughout the season to keep ourselves competitive. Other than that, since this is just a one season save, we're not concentrating on building any parts for next season. We're just concentrating on this season only. We're trying to win the championship with Ferrari. That is the challenge. Hopefully we can do that. So let's just have a quick look. We've got Eddie Irvine. We've got Luca Badoa as the reserve. We're waiting for these offers to come through. HQ-wise, what are we like? Pretty decent with the factory. We do have a forecasting centre at level 2, so we should be able to see pretty far on. And we're going to try and get most of the stuff reliable, although it's pretty reliable at the moment, in that we'll just concentrate on Shumi's car early on, seven days after the race. Eddie's car should be able to get through to the end of the race at 70%. The cars are actually even here. That's not often you see that in Motorsport Manager. We do have the best suspension out of all the cars. So when we get upgraded parts, it looks like they're going to go to Michael Schumacher because he's not going to be happy with that car. No, he's not happy with the car at the moment. He's happy with how it is, but he's not happy that he's got the same rated car as Eddie Irvine. Yeah, so anyway, we've got Sydney coming up first. It looks like it's going to be a totally wet race. Look at that. It's almost monsoon conditions. We're going to be wet in practice as well. So we're going to skip ahead now. Just to, before we get to Sydney, we'll see what we've done with the sponsors and then we'll get into the race. But yeah, we'll get into the race from there. So we're back just about to get into the Sydney Grand Prix. What we're going to do is lower this down. So we are making 1.1 million per race. We should be good enough to get this second or above. So two and a half million. It should allow us to upgrade the car through the season. We can't, we don't have a choice of tyres at the moment. The pre-fitted, we do have it's not like f1 of today we can refuel during the race i think we're on the 80 percent refueling as is the same yeah we can refuel for 
pretty much like two thirds of the race with 80 kilogram fuel tanks. Qualifying base grid, driver aids ban, 12 dry tyre choices. So I don't know if there's a split between just two tyres in that you get six choices of each. Obviously 1998 was the year where they introduced groove tyres back into the proceedings that weren't replaced by the full slicks again until 2007. We only have points for the top eight, going from 10 points to one point. Very high merit payment, it doesn't matter because this is a one a one season series. Limited pit stop crew, so they should have quick pit stop, 60 mile an hour, 21. Medium length qualifying session, so we should be back to one qualifying session here of 10 minutes and long practice session. So yeah, so everything looking decent here. Hopefully we can see how quick we are. It's going to be a wet race. doesn't look like it's going to be wet in qualifying, but the wet weather might play into our, our hands because the AI sometimes isn't the best with the rain. But anyway, we'll jump into the race. We'll come back when it's time to get into the race and yeah, we'll see what we can do in Sydney for the first Grand Prix of the season. <laughs> So, qualifying over, wet weather in qualifying, it threw absolutely everything into turmoil. We managed to um, time our laps absolutely perfectly because there was like a dry minute towards the end of the session, which we managed to be out on track for, which is why we're, which is why we're two seconds quicker than the rest of the field. But it's thrown up. Look at that, we've got the Tyrrell. And we've got a Narrows, we've got Rossett and Sala on the second row of the grid. Coulthard managed to get into fifth. We've got Mika Hakkinen all the way down in 14th. He couldn't do a time. He was out on the super softs in wet weather. He was out on the intermediates in dry weather. Just totally messed everything up. We've got the Benettons really far down. We've got the reigning champion Jack Villeneuve all the way down in 17th. The Sauber, the, the other two all the way down in 19th though. So they didn't time it right with both cars. We've got Williams in the top 10, so everything just thrown in a turmoil for this first race of the season. So, it's going to be interesting to see whether McLaren can come back from that, or whether we're going to be able to get ourselves a nice big gap from their mistakes from the first race that they're not going to quite be able to come back for. Should we go intermediate here? When's the rain going to stop? Oh, we're going to be on full wets pretty soon, aren't we? Yeah, and we're starting on the full wets. And then it's going to get dry, but not quite dry enough around lap 8. There's going to be a period of dry weather, and it looks like it's going to start raining again after that. So, yeah, we're going to go with the intermediate performance increase and the race trim. We know we're starting on the wet tyres. We're going to attack. And we can attack with the fuel, because we know we can refuel. It's going to be about lap six that we're coming in for the intermediate, so we don't need that much fuel to start the race. We'll go a little bit more with Schumacher, so he doesn't have to refuel as much when he comes into the pits. And we want to give Irvine a little bit more speed, because he's not as good a driver, so we know he's going to come in around lap six. So we'll give him eight laps of fuel, so, so he's a little bit quicker. A lap of fuel counts for almost three and a half tenths per lap, so... That's about how much slower he, slower he was than Schumacher in practice and in qualifying. So it sort of makes them equal there with the fuel loads that the character carry in. And there we go. We, we can see we've got the first row of the grid sewn up. We've got a little bit of a gap. Look at this. The car models look beautiful in the game. Or as beautiful as they can look. We're going to get a good start from Schumacher here. Schumacher off the line brilliantly. Irvine into second. We should be able to get enough of a lead up over Coulthard. Because it looks like Coulthard at the moment is struggling in fourth. Down in fifth, we've got a Narrows there. We've got the Jordan. Is that Damon Hill up into fourth place? And in front of him, we've got... This is one of the Tyrrell Fords. No, he's swapped over. This is the Tyrrell Ford here in fourth place. Let's just see if we can have a look at all these cars here. Look at that. We've got the McLaren West Mercedes. Can we see a Williams all the way back here with Jax Villeneuve all the way down in 14th? The Williams looking pretty decent as well. Battling with the other arrows of Ralph Schumacher. Let's just see what our driver's doing now. Schumacher still out in first place. Irvine a little bit further behind in second. Then we've got a big gap to Damon Hill, which we are pulling away with at the moment. Everyone else has turned down a little bit. We know we don't have to get this tyre too far. The weather's really cold at the moment that we can just keep pushing this tyre. It's not going to get that much heat in. Although there is always the risk of crashing in this game. And Damon, if you say there's always a risk of crashing, and we see that Damon Hill... Has crashed. Let's ignore that. Let's go. Can we see him? Where is he? 
Where is he? Is he in the wall somewhere? He's all the way over here in the... Oh, whilst we do that, we need to turn down to low because we've got a safety car coming out. Let's just have a look here. <laughs> there we've got Damon Hill. Crashed. He was doing so well as well. He got up into third or fourth. Puts Kuntard up into third now. We are not going to come into the pits. We don't need to come into the pits because we've got enough life in these tyres. It's going to take us through, though, until it's almost intermediate time. Oh, could we jump in the pits and be cheeky? We've got the safety car coming out. We're going to catch him. We're going to be behind it for one lap. And then the safety car coming in, that's going to be two laps. No, it's not quite far enough, is it? It cost us about 30 seconds of race time. So, yeah, there's no point coming in. We'll get... Actually, we'll just go... Should we just keep high? No, we'll go low. We don't want to use up too much time. But we'll try. Once it gets, like, to a lap left, we'll try. We'll turn the tyres up a little bit more. So they're a lot hotter than the AI's car on the start of the race. We're just catching the safety car up now. So we'll skip ahead a lap. We'll skip ahead a lap until the safety car is going in. And then we'll come back from that position. Right, the safety car has just speeded up here. So we're going to speed up our tyres. We're going to go back into overtake mode here because we know we've got fuel to burn. We can refuel the car. The safety car is pulling ahead. So it's just on Schumacher now to get this race going again. I'll follow him here. Should we look from Irvine's perspective because he's a little bit behind. We can see Schumacher a little bit further down the road. So off we go again. Irvine coming up the inside of Schumacher. Can't get close enough to try and make a move. Just need to get some heat back into these tires. It's going to be really hard because it's only 14 degrees out. So the weather at the moment, it's going to dry off beginning at the end of this lap. It's going to be dry and it's going to get to the point where the, the track's almost dry. It's like one lap of a dry track and then it's going to get worse again. And it's not going to get to the point where we need wet tires again. So just have to look what we're going to do here. Should we get one of the cars in this lap and be ready for the rain stopping? How quick is this rain going to stop? It's going to be Irvine first because we're not going to take that risk with Schumacher. Because we do want him higher up the thing. It's not The rain's not stopping this lap, is it? We're going to have to double stack in the pits, which is what we don't want. We don't want to double stack. Right, so what we'll do is we'll pit Irvine. We'll put a lot of fuel in his car that he can get to the end of the race on it with pushing. Hopefully that takes enough time. Enough time. So we don't want the cars double stacking. That would be almost as bad as... Um, well, it's almost just as bad as Irvine being out on this little bit of a wet track. So Irvine's coming in. We're going to see the track start to dry off. He's in for a, quite a long pit stop. He's in 18th, 17th. He's got a lot of empty track to run with. We're just going to keep him going, pushing here for a few laps just to try and make up for the fact that he's on the wrong type of tyre here. We know it's possibly going to wreck his race, but he should be able to get back into third place, hopefully. Schumacher this time, though. He's going to come in for the Inters, because we're getting towards that position. We're going to fuel him as well, so he can go to the end of the race. And we'll have a lot of extra fuel as well, so we can push really push the car if we want to. And we're going to come back out in 16th. I don't know whether yeah, he wants to come out for Inters. Right, so the track right now is getting into the Inter range. So all these cars are now on the wrong tyre, so... Irvine should be able to come back at them a tiny little bit. So let's just watch Schumacher in the pits. What is Kuntard doing? Is Kuntard in the pits? No, Kuntard goes past. He's on the wrong tyre. Kuntard's on the wrong tyre. And a mistake on the tyres with Schumacher. A mistake on the tyres. Right, so we're going to go overtake. We don't really need to look after these tyres. But Schumacher is now 12th. And he's just out in front of Eddie Irvine. All these other cars are out on the wrong... And a lot of them are going for dry tyres. Ah, and it is going to be dry. What are we doing? We should have gone for the dry. What was I doing? What was I thinking? We should have gone for dry. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. Although we're going to be quicker... We're going to be quick enough for a couple of laps. We are going to be quick enough for a couple of laps. So that's why... That's why Kuntad stretched it out. <laughs> right, so... Irvine makes the move on Schumacher meanwhile. The Schumacher is being held up by these two arrows. He gets past them now. Ninth, Irvine is already up into fifth place. Finding his way through all these cars that are on the wet tyre. Are we going to be good enough? Because they're going to come in for the sauce. But they do need to switch to another pair of intermediates. 
Can we get these tyres to the end of the race? Not quite, because we've been pushing them, haven't we? So let's go, let's go conservative. Let's go conservative. Can we push these tyres? Can Schumacher get these tyres to the end of the race? Just about, Schumacher can. So if we look after these tyres, we can get them to the end of the race. We know we've got enough fuel to get to the end of the race. So if we do this again without pit stopping, we might need to pit Schumacher at some point. But if we can do this without stopping again, that would be the best thing. Coulthard, meanwhile, is still out on these wet tyres. I don't know what he's trying to do. Is he trying to see what the weather's going to do? Maybe McLaren can't see ahead and maybe the AI is basing things off that. But Irvine is now right in the back of him there. Coulthard dives into the pit. So Irvine, first place. We're going to run these tyres cold. Because we want to try and get tyre. We want to try and get them as far as we can. Irvine's gone through these tyres a lot more than Schumacher has. So what have we got left now? Eight laps. It's just about on the limit. I think the Inters can get down to about 10% before they start to drop off. Meanwhile, we've got Jack Villeneuve behind us in one of the Williams. Done amazing to get himself back up to third place as he was down so far. The order in the order where has Hi where has Hacking managed to get himself up to? He hasn't got up any higher. He's in 16th. I think he's actually lost places there, hasn't he? But Eddie Irvine still leading this Grand Prix at the moment. He's one and a half seconds almost in front of Schumacher. Even though, even though he's running low mode here, we're just trying to look after these tyres. We're just trying to look after them. That we can get them to the end of the race. Five laps. It's going to be touch and go. We might need to do it. We're going to have to do it at some point, aren't we? Hopefully we can be far enough ahead. Kuntard is now coming back at us. Kuntard's now flying back at us. Here comes Kuntard. Here he comes. Where is he? There he is. Kuntard now. Here he comes. Is he going to get into first place? Hopefully. Well, our tyres are going to start coming back now. Our tyres, we know, are going to start coming back. And Kuntard's probably going to go too long on these tyres before he goes for his intermediate tyres. So rain is going to start. Here comes the rain again. So is that going to be good enough for us? Should we let Schumacher through? Kuntard is only six seconds in front. And here comes the rain. Just what we wanted. Who have we got behind? Here comes Heinz Harold Frentzen in the other Williams now. Third place. He's coming back. Right, so Irvine, second place. Kuntard is still out in front, still gaining here. The rain, still coming, still there, thereabouts. What are we looking at like for these tyres? Oh, we're going to have to change them, aren't we? We're going to have to for Irvine. Plenty of fuel left that he only needs to pit. But that is going to be back out in 10th. Oh, should we see? Should we go? Should we risk it? Let's get him to come back at Kuntad first. Here we go. We're on the charge again now. We're coming back. Coming back. Two laps remaining. Oh, it's going to be so close. Don't think we've got the tyre life left to do this. We just need to get to Kuntad. Is he thinking about pitting? No, he's still not thinking about pitting Kuntard, and we're coming back at him right now. We've got a lot of fuel left here as well, haven't we? So we can actually push this fuel. We can push the fuel load. And there we go. We're back to Kuntard. Kuntard dives into the pits. Right, so let's go one lap here. Let's push these tyres. Can we get far enough in front? Can we get far enough in front of him? Oh, we can only pit one car though, can't we? Right, let's try and get Shumi to the end of the race. Let's get Irvine into the pits. His tyre's going a lot more. 25%, 30%. Schumacher can do... He can possibly do three laps on these. So, right, so we're going to get Irvine in. Should we even get Irvine in? No, because he is, is, is our going to go. Right, so... One lap of fuel, just so he can really push the car. So we've got a few parts going. We'll go fast. No, we shouldn't risk fast because we've already made a mistake. 
Right, so we'll go fast with Irvine. We know we can really push his tyres. Schumacher, meanwhile, has a lot of fuel to burn. His tyres are almost gone. Who's coming up behind him? 30 seconds back to Villeneuve. Where would Schumacher come out of the pit? Second place. We could pit him as well. But he would double stack with Eddie Irvine. Maybe we can get him in the lap after, depending on what it looks like. But Eddie is now hitting the pits. Schumacher comes through. Good pit stop for Eddie Irvine. Back out into second place. So that worked out for us there. Schumacher, meanwhile, Eddie's catching him. Schumacher's saying he can get to the end of the race here. <laughs> Schumacher's saying he can get to the end of the race. We'll see if he can do. He's got one more lap to go. Can Schumacher keep this position in first place? Can he keep hold of these tyres? Let's just fault. Ah, uh, the gearbox is going. So we're going to have to be a little bit more careful here, aren't we? Not to push the gearbox too much. Schumacher's on the final lap. The tyres are going to hang on here. The tyres are going to hang on. Eddie's coming back, but not enough. Where's Kuntar gone? Ninth place Kuntar's gone to. How can he? 16th. But Williams, Villeneuve, done amazing to get himself up into third place. He's got a few problems with his car, though. Irvine's got a few problems. What's Schumacher looking condition-wise? Just a front wing. But there's not much to go in this race now. Irvine's going slightly quicker. No. Not that much quicker, actually. He's going a little bit quicker. I don't think he's going to be able to catch Mick here. And here we go. Mick's coming across the line. Here we go. First place for Mick Schumacher. Eddie Irvine as well. Comes in second place. Second place for Irvine. We've got Villeneuve finishing in third place in the Williams. And then we've got Fishy, Fishy Cella in the Benetton. Coming around in fourth place. And then we've got an Arrows of Diniz in fifth. Ralph Schumacher in the Arrows in 6. Nakano finishes as well. Nakano in the Minardi. So a couple of teams here scoring points. That shouldn't have done. And we've got Verstappen as well in the Stuart Ford. <laughs> and then Alexander Wurtz in the Benetton. So we've got like the Minardi, the Stuarts <laughs> finishing in the points here. So they'll be really happy with that. Uh, Tyrell though didn't score points so they're going to be under a lot of pressure now for much of the season they're going to be far and away in 10th place but Schumacher did really well to hold on to those tyres I don't think Eddie would have done but he'd have been able to hold on to them enough to fight off Villeneuve he still would have lost that first place to Schumacher though because his tyres would have gone to the point that he would have slowed down so we did need to get him into the pits otherwise we would have risked him not being in second place Quickest lap of the race shouldn't have been us because we didn't do anything on a dry tyre. And then we see Kuntad did some laps on the dry tyre, did a 133. Not actually that much quicker than what we were doing, four seconds. So it, it did actually turn out to be quite a good decision, staying for those intermediates, even though we panicked a little when we saw the other cars coming for dry tyres. We did manage to make it worth, work, but 18 points, that is amazing. So what are the constructors there? William second. We got Benetton, Arrows, Jordan, Minardi, then McLaren in seventh. So it's going to be a struggle. Our Stewart didn't actually get into the team, into the points. I thought they did. Oh no, because it's only the top eight, isn't it? Yes, it's only the top eight. So Verstappen didn't actually score points. I'm thinking of current points. Yeah, Verstappen didn't actually get points there. Look at that. Minardi scoring points. Jordan scoring points. Arrows scoring points. It's going to be between uh, Terrell and Stewart of who finishes bottom. I think Sauber have got enough about them to score a couple of points this season. Maybe. Maybe they could. But everyone's happy here. We're first. Nothing really matters here at the moment. Cash doesn't matter other than building the engine parts and so on and so forth. The other aero parts to the car that we need. It doesn't really matter overall. It still does have the Asia Pacific Super Cup here. But they're just all random teams and we can't actually see... These drivers too much in the real game. We can't actually see them in the list of things because they must all be set as like GT races only. But yeah, anyway, that's it for the first episode here. Actually, we've got some scouting reports. Let's just have a quick look at these. We've got Alexander Wurtz back. He is almost four stars. Damon Hill. A little bit worse than that. But he's pretty pretty old. He was on the he was on the decline a little bit. And then we've got David Coulthard. 
just under four stars as well, about the same as Hill. So Schumacher should be the best driver here. We'll just do the interview as well. He can't beat that, and we'll go. I'm over the moon. A bit more for marketability. So yeah, anyway, that is it for the first episode in this new series. As I said, it will be mainly on Saturdays. I might switch it to a week, but since it is only going to be the one season, and I'm doing the McLaren videos every day, we might just keep this to a Saturday series. It will be two races in future this series, since it's only going to be like once a week. It will be two races an episode for the, from this point forward. It's just one race this episode just because there was a lot of intro to do and it would take me an awful long time to get it uploaded considering it might be a little bit longer but in the future it'll be two races but it won't be about the same length as this video but anyway hit that subscribe button down below if you want to keep up with the mclaren series you want to keep up with this ferrari 1998 series it's going to be a fun series everything looks beautiful in the game we don't it's mod doesn't have the right pictures and stuff but it's to be forgiven because the car models look absolutely beautiful and as i said if you do want to get this mod it is on the steam workshop under mini mod yeah 1998 mini mod you can pick it up from there you only need that you don't need any other parts to it because it just works by itself um yeah and the team logos wouldn't work because the teams are in the wrong order as what they say like the Scuderia Rossini, which is a Ferrari in the vanilla game, is actually, who was it? I think it was Sauber here, wasn't it? Yeah, so anyway, hit the like button if you like this video. Leave a comment. But until next time, I will see you in this series next week back in 1998. And goodbye. Quite decent as well. They do have Giancarlo Fisicella in there and Alexander Vert. So we'll see how they can do this season. Then obviously we have the yellow Jordan car. Damon Hill's first season at Jordan 1998 he's just left the Arrows team Arrows really underperforming in 1997 and obviously Hill in 1996 won the driver's title with Williams also in the who else is in the Jordan car I think it should be it should be Ralph Schumacher in there yeah so Ralph Schumacher should be in there and We'll just see how the Honda engine can do. It should be rated pretty decently, the Honda engine of 1998. And then we come to the first of the Ford branded cars, the Stuart Ford. Um, they should be running the VJ. Yeah, it should be the VJ version of the engine. So they should have a better rated engine than the Ford Minardi and the Tyrell Ford as well. So there's three Ford supplied teams. Yeah, so... I'm guessing Stewart's engine should be rated better than Minardi and Tyrell and Tyrell's because it is an upgraded version. The Tyrell and Minardi they run the JD version engine, which is a 1996 engine. So it's a little bit further behind. And then we have the Black Arrows. Arrows in 1998 went with what's his name? Oh, he's totally gone. The Brian Hart Engineering Company, that's it. They went with the Brian Hart Engineering Company. They built their own in-house engine. But it wasn't that good. It had a sure it had a lot of reliability problems, I think. But we'll see how the car's not rated too bad. But anyway, that's enough of getting into the teams at the moment. We've got our beautiful prancing horse here, the red Ferrari, the Marlboro branded Ferrari, with shell on the side. Beautiful car. It's a lot thinner. A lot thinner at the front. As we can see, it's a lot more aerodynamically pleasing than the McLaren Mercedes, but the McLaren is going to be really overpowered here. So let's jump in. It's going to say Windsor Racing. We can forgive that, just as we can forgive that the drivers don't have the proper team colours in as yet. And there we go. We do have the second best rated car. We do have the second best rated drivers. I'm guessing that's because Eddie Irvine's three stars. Michael Schumacher is possibly the best rated driver in the game. We can't actually see anyone else. We'll go ahead and scout everyone. We'll scout everyone in, in the game. It should only just be Formula 1 here. So we'll scout everyone and then we'll be able to see what sort of ratings they've got. We do have one team missing from this game, which is the Prost team. The Perge, Prost Peugeot missing from this game. Although we do, we do seem to have their drivers, don't we? Jano Trulli. Is it Ty uh, Tyrell? Tyrell. He's the reserve of our arrows of Ralph Schumacher. And let's just see what our driver's are doing now. Schumacher's still out in first place. Irvine a little bit further behind in second. Then we've got a big gap to Damon Hill. 
which we are pulling away with at the moment. Everyone else has turned down a little bit. We know we don't have to get this tyre too far. The weather's really cold at the moment that we can just keep pushing this tyre. It's not going to get that much heat in. Although there is always the risk of crashing in this game. And Damon, if you say there's always a risk of crashing. And we see that Damon Hill has crashed. Let's ignore that. Let's go. Can we see him? Where is he? Where is he? Is he in the wall somewhere? It's all the way over here. In the, oh, whilst we do that, we need to turn down to low because we've got a safety car coming out. Let's just have a look here. <laughs> there we've got Damon Hill. Crashed. He was doing so well as well. He got up into third or fourth. Puts Kuntard up into third. Now, we are not going to come into the pits. We don't need to come into the pits because we've got enough life in these tyres. It's going to take us through, though, until... It's almost intermediate time. Oh, could we jump in the pits and be cheeky? We've got the safety car coming out. We're going to catch him. We're going to be behind it for one lap. And then the safety car coming in. That's going to be two laps. No, it's not quite far enough, is it? It cost us about 30 seconds of race time. So, yeah, there's no point coming in. We'll get... Actually, we'll just go... Should we just keep high? No, we'll go low. We don't want to use up too much time. But we'll try... Once it gets like to a lap left, we'll try. We'll turn the tyres up a little bit more. So they're a lot hotter than the AI's car on the start of the race. We're just catching the safety car up now. So we'll skip ahead a lap. We'll skip ahead a lap until the safety car is going in. And then we'll come back from that position. Right, the safety car has just speeded up here. So we're going to speed up our tyres. We're going to go back into overtake mode here. Because we know we've got fuel to burn. We can refuel the car. The safety car is pulling ahead, so it's just on Schumacher now to get this race going again. I'll follow him here. Do you want to look from Irvine's perspective? Because he's a little bit behind. We can see Schumacher a little bit further down the road. So off we go again. Irvine coming up the inside of Schumacher. Can't get close enough to try and make a move. Just need to get some heat back into these tires. It's going to be really hard because it's only 14 degrees out. So the weather at the moment is going to dry off beginning at the end of this lap it's going to be dry and it's going to get to the point where the, the track's almost dry it's like one lap of a dry track and then it's going to get worse again and it's not going to get to the point where we need wet tires again so just have to look what we're going to do here should we get one of the cars in this lap and be ready for the rain stopping how quick is this rain going to stop it's going to be Irvine first because we're not going to take that risk with Schumacher because we do want him higher up the thing it's not Let's just fall. Uh, the gearbox is going. So we're going to have to be a little bit more careful here, aren't we? Not to push the gearbox too much. Schumacher's on the final lap. The tyres are going to hang on here. The tyres are going to hang on. Eddie's coming back, but not enough. Where's Kuntar gone? Ninth place Kuntar's gone to. How can he? 16th. But Williams Villeneuve done amazing to get himself up into third place. He's got a few problems with his car, though. Irvine's got a few problems. What's Schumacher looking condition-wise? Just a front wing. But there's not much to go in this race now. Irvine's going slightly quicker. No. Not that much quicker, actually. Yeah, he's going a little bit quicker. I don't think he's going to be able to catch Mick here. And here we go. Mick's coming across the line. Here we go. First place for Mick Schumacher. Eddie Irvine, as well, comes in second place. Second place for Irvine. We've got Villeneuve finishing in third place in the Williams. And then we've got Fishy Fishy Chella in the Benetton coming around in fourth place. And then we've got an Arrows of Diniz in fifth. Ralph Schumacher in the Arrows in sixth. Nakano finishes as well. Nakano in the Minardi. So a couple of teams here scoring points that shouldn't have done. And we've got Verstappen as well in the Stuart Ford. <laughs> And then Alexander, Alexander Burtz in the Benetton. So we've got like the Minardi, the Stewarts <laughs> finishing in the points here. So they'll be really happy with that. Uh, Tyrell, though, didn't score points. So they're going to be under a lot of pressure now for much of the season. They're going to be far and away in 10th place. But Schumacher did really well to hold on to those tyres. I don't think Eddie would have done, but he'd have been able to hold on to them enough to fight off Villeneuve. He still would have lost that first place to Schumacher though because his tyres would have gone to the point that he would have slowed down. So we did need to get him into the pits otherwise we would have risked him not being in second place. 
quickest lap of the race shouldn't have been us because we didn't do anything on a dry tyre and then we see Kuntad did some laps on the dry tyre, did a 133, not actually that much quicker than what we were doing, 4 seconds. So it, it did actually turn out to be quite a good decision, staying in for those intermediates even though we panicked a little when we saw the other cars coming for dry tyres. We did manage to make it work, work but 18 points, that is amazing. So what are the constructors there? Williams second. We've got Benetton, Arrows, Jordan, Minardi, then McLaren in seventh. So it's going to be a struggle. Our Stewart didn't actually get into the team. Into the points. I thought they did. Oh no, because it's only the top eight, isn't it? Yes, it's only the top eight. So Verstappen didn't actually score points. I'm thinking of current points. Yeah, Verstappen didn't actually get points there. Look at that Mercedes engine. They do have Mika Hakkinen and David Kuntar. They are the favourites. They did win the 1998 series by quite a lot. Mika Hakkinen just beat Michael Schumacher to the title, didn't he? Because if I recall correctly, Schumacher, did he, he stalled on the last race in Japan. I think he was out of it already by that point. But yeah, McLaren Mercedes, obviously the favourites here. Our Ferrari, the F300. It should be a little bit better than the Mercedes car, the McLaren Mercedes. In the corner, it's a little bit more aero-focused. The Mercedes, or well, the McLaren Mercedes, as usual, like the Mercedes of today. Obviously not like the McLaren of today. Really strong, a really quick Mercedes engine. Our Ferrari, obviously we've got Michael Schumacher and Eddie Irvine in there. So we'll be hoping for a really good season. And it's going to be a little bit confusing because the team that's in the Scuderia Rossini slot is the Sauber. They do have a Ferrari engine as well, rebadged as the Patronus SPE-01D. A little underpowered this season. They were in 1997, 1998 actually, isn't it? Because uh, they have John Alacy in the car, who's just joined from Benetton. So he, he finished fourth, I think he finished fourth the season before. So hopefully he's going to be having a good season in the Sauber. They also have Johnny Herbert, who's been with them for quite a while. In the Panther slot, we have the Williams team. 1998 they moved to red away from their blue white and gold library the famous library of the 1990s recolored for the fact that instead of Rothman's uh, British American British American tobacco company I think yeah I think that's what they called they went or they wanted the Winfield brand promoting so everything changed to red they do have the reigning champion Jax Villeneuve in the car they are the reigning constructors champion but but 1998 saw a lot of upheaval from Williams. At the end of 1997, Adrian Newey left, which left them designing this FW20 car for 1998, totally without him. Renault, um, I can't remember what happened with Renault. I think they had a buyout or something and they went, I'm not quite sure what happened with Renault, but they dropped out of supplying engines for Formula One. It left Williams in a bit of a mess. They went with Mechachrome. Mechachrome, obviously, they bought the 1997 engines from Renault, rebadged them as Mechachrome. So they are a year behind engine wise, and we're possibly going to see that with the car. They should still have like the third best car overall. They also do have. Who was the other driver in the car? It's totally gone out of my head. Heinz Harold Frentzen, that's it. Should have Heinz Harold Frentzen in there. I haven't actually gone into this mod to check too much. Although I did do I did do a practice with them just to see how the graphics work, but I can't quite remember. I didn't click around the other teams too much. Then Kitano, obviously with 98, obviously the same reason Williams did in that Renault left the spot. Uh, Benetton were a Renault customer. Renault left. They also went with the Mecha Chrome engine, but it was rebranded with the Play Life. A rebadged, uh, rebadged as Play Life. So they're, uh, I'm guessing they're going to struggle here, but the car's rated quite good. The drivers are rated quite decent as well. They do have Giancarlo Fisicella in there and Alexander Vert. So we'll see how they can do this season. Then obviously we have the yellow Jordan car. Damon Hill's first season at Jordan 1998. He's just left the Arrows team. Arrows really underperforming in 1997. And obviously Hill in 1996 won the driver's title with Williams. Also in the... Who else is in the Jordan car? It's, I think it should be. It should be Ralph Schumacher in there. Yeah, so Ralph Schumacher should be in there. And 
We'll just see how the Honda engine can do. It should be rated pretty decently, the Honda engine of 1998. And then we come to the first of the Ford branded cars, the Stuart Ford. Um, they should be running the VJ. Yeah, it should be the VJ version of the engine. So they should have a better rated engine than the Ford Minardi and the Tyrell Ford as well. So there's three Ford supplied teams. Yeah, so I'm guessing Stuart's engine should be rated better than Minardi and Tyrell and Tyrell's because it is an upgraded version. The Tyrell and Minardi they run the JD version engine, which is a 1996 engine. So it's a little bit further behind. And then we have the Black Arrows. Arrows in 1998 went with what's his name? Oh, he's totally gone. The Brian Hart Engineering Company, that's it. They went with the Brian Hart Engineering Company. They built their own in-house engine. But it wasn't that good. It had a sorry, it had a lot of reliability problems, I think. But we'll see how the car is not rated too bad. But anyway, that's enough of getting into the teams at the moment. We've got our beautiful prancing horse here, the red Ferrari, the Marlboro branded Ferrari. With shell on the side. Beautiful car. It's a lot thinner. A lot thinner at the front. And as we can see, it's a lot more aerodynamically pleasing than the McLaren Mercedes. But the McLaren is going to be really overpowered here. So let's jump in. It's going to say Windsor Racing. We can forgive that. Just as we can forgive that the drivers don't have the proper team colours in as yet. And there we go. We do have the second best rated car. We do have the second best rated drivers i'm guessing that's because eddie irvine's three stars michael schumacher is possibly the best rated driver in the game we can't actually see anyone else we'll go ahead and scout everyone we'll scout everyone in in the game best rated drivers i'm guessing that's because eddie irvine's three stars michael schumacher is possibly the best rated driver in the game we can't actually see anyone else we'll go ahead and scout everyone We'll scout everyone in, in the game. It should only just be Formula 1 here. So we'll scout everyone. And then we'll be able to see what sort of ratings they've got. We do have one team missing from this game. Which is the Prost team. The Perge, Prost Peugeot missing from this game. Although we do, we do seem to have their drivers, don't we? Jan Trulli. Is it Ty, uh, Tyrell? Tyrell. He's the reserve driver there. And where's John Alacy then? Where's John Alacy? He's at Sauber. No, no, not John Alacy. Who was the other? Let's see if we can see there. Oh, with Olivia Panis. And he's a reserve driver. He's a reserve driver there. Yeah, Olivia Panis is a reserve driver at Minardi. So, I'm guessing he's a little bit better driver than Nakano and Trero. But he's reserved there, so new beginnings, welcome. Welcome to Design Facility. We'll set ourselves second, just so we don't get fired. If we're not winning the championship, we don't want to end up being fired. We're waiting for a lot of sponsors coming through, although we can get this one, 300,000 per race. Although it's not engine, uh, not engines. Sponsorship money is not going to be that big a deal. We're only going to be doing a few upgrades throughout the season to keep ourselves competitive. Other than that, since this is just a one season save, we're not concentrating on building any parts for next season. We're just concentrating on this season only. We're trying to win the championship with Ferrari. That is the challenge. Hopefully we can do that. So let's just have a quick look. We've got Eddie Irvine. We've got Luca Badoa as the reserve. We're waiting for these offers to come through. HQ wise, what are we like? Pretty decent with the factory. We do have a forecasting center at level two, so we should be able to see pretty far on. And we're gonna try and get most of the stuff reliable, although it's pretty reliable at the moment, and that will just concentrate on Shumi's car early on, seven days after the race. Eddie's car should be able to get through to the end of the race at 70%. The cars are actually even here. That's not often you see that in Motorsport Manager. We do have the best suspension out of all the cars. So when we get upgraded parts, it looks like they're going to go to Michael Schumacher because he's not going to be happy with that car. No, he's not happy with the car at the moment. He's happy with how it is, but he's not happy that he's got the same rated car as Eddie Irvine. Yeah, so anyway, we've got Sydney coming up first. It looks like it's going to be a totally wet race. Look at that. It's almost monsoon conditions. We're going to be wet in practice as well. So I'm going to skip ahead now. Just to, before we get to Sydney, we'll see what we've done with the sponsors. And then we'll get into the race. But yeah, we'll get into the race from there. 
So we're back just about to get into the Sydney Grand Prix. What we're going to do is lower this down. So out of supplying engines for Formula One, it left Williams in a bit of a mess. They went with Mechachrome. Mechachrome, obviously, they bought the 1997 engines from Renault, rebadged them as Mechachrome. So they are a year behind engine wise and we're possibly going to see that with the car. They should still have like the third best car overall. They also do have, who was the other driver in the car? It's totally gone out of my head. Heinz Harold Frentzen, that's it. Should have Heinz Harold Frentzen in there. <laughs> I haven't actually gone into this mod to check too much. Although I did do I did do a practice with them just to see how the graphics work, but I can't quite remember. I didn't click around the other teams too much. Then Kitano, obviously we've got Benetton. They struggled as well in 1998. Obviously the same reason Williams did in that Renault left the spot. Uh, Benetton were a Renault customer. Renault left. They also went with the Mechachrome engine, but it was rebranded with the Play Life. A rebadged uh, re as Play Life. So they're, uh, I'm guessing they're going to struggle here, but the car's rated quite good. The drivers are rated quite decent as well. They do have Giancarlo Fisicella in there and Alexander Vert. So we'll see how they can do this season. Then obviously we have the yellow Jordan car. Damon Hill's first season at Jordan 1998 he's just left the Arrows team Arrows really underperforming in 1997 and obviously Hill in 1996 won the driver's title with Williams also in the who else is in the Jordan car it's, I think it should be it should be Ralph Schumacher in there yeah so Ralph Schumacher should be in there and We'll just see how the Honda engine can do. It should be rated pretty decently, the Honda engine of 1998. And then we come to the first of the Ford branded cars, the Stuart Ford. Um, they should be running the VJ. Yeah, it should be the VJ version of the engine. So they should have a better rated engine than the Ford Minardi and the Tyrell Ford as well. So there's three Ford supplied teams. Yeah, so... I'm guessing Stewart's engine should be rated better than Minardi and Tyrell and Tyrell's because it is an upgraded version. The Tyrell and Minardi they run the JD version engine, which is a 1996 engine. So it's a little bit further behind. And then we have the Black Arrows. Arrows in 1998 went with what's his name? Oh, he's totally gone. The Brian Hart Engineering Company. That's it. They went with the Brian Hart Engineering Company. They built their own in-house engine. But it wasn't that good. It had a sorry, it had a lot of reliability problems, I think. But we'll see how the car is not rated too bad. But anyway, that's enough of getting into the teams at the moment. We've got our beautiful prancing horse here, the red Ferrari, the Marlboro branded Ferrari. 